by making this video in large measure to counteract a uh, fallacy that occurs quite frequently in men at a uh, what I might call a, a in-between stage of when men realize uh, just how bad they have it in specifically Western society. I've been noticing a large number of comments popping up across all sorts of videos, in particular this one by Armageddon, uh, citing the idea that American women suck, and very clearly they do, <laughs> no question about that. And so the solution is, drop American women and head east. Um, I'm sure many of us have encountered this idea. And I want to talk a little bit more specifically about that. And I'm going to bring up Rifo's Law yet again. And Rifo's Law, as I've said many times, can't be stated enough. And I realize the intention of Armageddon was, of course, to focus on American women because that's what he's most familiar with. That's fine. I hardly agree with him for the most part. Uh, but I want to just take some of these comments as, in, as a totality and um, maybe dissect them or look at them. The idea uh, is that American women, and we can effectively substitute the term American women uh, with for, well, Canadian women, British women, Irish women, essentially any Western woman. A Western woman. A Western woman is also a woman who is born into the culture. I, I made a video about this at some point in time. A, a, for example, a Korean or a Japanese woman is a woman who is born in Korea or South Korea, usually, or Japan. A, a, a girl or a woman who, of Korean ethnicity or Japanese ethnicity who grows up in the United States or the UK, they are not, they're neither Korean nor Japanese. They are of that culture afflicted, just as all other Western women are, with the virus of feminism, or its aftermath, directly or indirectly. Now, it makes sense that this be a natural, albeit fallacious, reaction to the idea that if Western women aren't any good, the women out there overseas in the East are much better. And it makes sense because uh, in the West, particularly in the United States, the nucleus of feminism, what is, uh, well, that's where it basically took, uh, took seed. That, that's where feminism got off the ground, most more or less in the United States. That's where the virus spread to all four corners of the globe. And so, of course, it's natural to think, hmm, American women suck, and let's go east. And just anecdotally, I, I know dozens, personally, dozens of men who uh, follow along the, this line of uh, thoughts in, in terms of what their expectations are and what they may think. Well, Western women, American women, just a substitute for Western women, they suck, so let's, let's look elsewhere. And I've, I, I don't like using the term fell victim to it, but I bought into the notion as well at some point in time, for quite some time actually. The idea I had was, like many, many other men, I was no exception. Western women uh, suck, and you hear the good things about the tr traditional roles and what have you, and we've talked about traditionalism, and so, you know, you look elsewhere. But it unfortunately is a fallacy, because women are women. A woman is a woman regardless of her culture. Culture is always a mitigating force, it is a limiting factor, and it does put constraints on our inherent and the congenital tendencies, if you will. And both Barbarossa and I have essentially argued that feminism, the idea that female interests should be promoted over male interests, basically promote over any everything and anything, regardless of uh, the consequences, I think feminism is inherent to the female. And so, uh, depending on the culture uh, a female is born into, that inherent feminism will uh, be born out more so 
and to a greater extent or to a lesser extent. In a Western cultural environment, such as the United States, the UK, Germany, France, and so on and so forth, um, because feminism has, the virus of feminism has infected the highest levels of state and government, uh, that would be the most plausible explanation, to my mind, for this, as to why uh, Western women appear, ostensibly, to be much worse than other women. Now, this theory is easily tested empirically. Um, you can read the accounts. And this has been my experience in dealing with women who've been transposed from their original culture to a Western one. When a woman from a, a different cultural circle journeys to the West to live in that cultural, that new cultural circle, that new environment, uh, you will see a transformation. Um, the inherent feministic tendencies of the female, of the human female, will come, uh, come out much, much more strongly uh, than they did in the previous culture if uh, said constraints had been present. So, for example, I have cited this particular female a few times, my, my, my ex, my most recent ex. Uh, she left South Korea when she was about 16 and moved to the United States, and you could see how the infection of feminism had already taken place. Not consciously, mind you, uh, because my ex was wholly incapable of self-reflection. I've never met a single person who, could, who, could, who reflected less. Or if so, she was very in inarticulate uh, on the subject, or her ability to articulate her reflection was not there. That being said, uh, no, the, the selfishness and all these inherent female qualities that we've come to know simply uh, come to the fore much more strongly in that environment. But the, the thing I want to stress is that they're always there. They're always there. They're always underneath the surface. Um, at best, usually they're above the surface, regardless of culture. And I'm familiar with several different ones, a few Asian ones as well. Um, I mean, it, it really isn't that much different. Uh, take another anecdotal example. A friend of mine at some point in time had married to uh, a Chinese woman who uh, eventually, uh, they eventually got divorced. It was fortunate she took mercy on him and didn't steal all of his assets, but then again, they got divorced in Switzerland. They might have uh, different rules there. And uh, she had the same expectation. Shortly after getting divorced, uh, she found some new guy, uh, a new patron, as it were, and they got married, and then they have a kid together, and he does quite well, and yada, 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 and so on and so forth. Um, there really are no exceptions. Um, traditional Chinese girls that I have been familiar with living in the UK, for example, I've visited China, I've never lived there, I often spoke of their concerns of finding, you know, the, a guy who's stable, the right job, and so on, so the benefit, right, looking for the benefit in the male. So th there really isn't any difference. And unfortunately, not, I, I'm, I'm rather loath to, uh, to chide my fellow men on this, but I, I chide myself in, in, in doing so, because I once to, I once as well, had subscribed to this notion that you know you escape the Western female, it's all you, you know you're headed in the blue yonder and everything's fine. It's not. Women will. Uh, a woman is an inherently selfish creature. I've said this many times. The human female's primary interest, primary interest is herself. On occasion, this is very inconsistent. She will show some concern for her direct offspring, uh, and that's about it. So, this idea that you can escape and find some other kind of woman out there. It, it's simply not true. What you can find, as I've said just now, are these mitigating cultural forces. But even as I speak, the tethers that weld together these mitigating for forces are being torn asunder. Barbara also talked about this. The fact is that feminism uh, with a capital F, I don't mean the lowercase feminism that's innate to all females, the state, the state issued feminism, the, the state infection, it's everywhere these days. Everywhere. Um, we see it in India, we see it in 
Japan, and, and frankly, we see the counter reaction in the herbivore men. We, we see it in quite a lot of places. The simple fact is that you will have a slightly, slightly better deal if you marry another female not of Western culture in her own culture, provided those constraints are present. But at the end of the day, the differences will probably be slight. She's still only in it for herself, looking to garner an advantage for herself. And your personhood, your health, your well-being will not be of primary concern to her, only, only in as much as it affects your ability to generate income and sort of supply her with the goodies that she likes and that she needs. And to be fair, divorce law is different and depending on country to country. The Anglo-Saxon Anglo -Saxon countries tend to be the most draconian by far, in my experience, from what I've read and heard. But, um, you know, a woman, a, a woman doesn't need to be divorced from you to make your life a living hell. I've gone through that. My divorced friend has gone through that when he was still married. So these are all things to consider. And the question is, the ultimate question is, since all, all women are like that, since all women are ultimately interested only in their own advantage, um, whether those cultural constraints are present or not, do you really want to take the risk and marry someone like that? And often I hear the counter argument, it's not really one where the, the, the claim is laid at my feet that you know, all human beings are essentially self-interested. And yes, I would tend to agree with that. However, uh, men are much, much more inclined to act in an honor, honorable and self-sacrificing way for the benefit of the greater good, if you want to use those terms, uh, or for others uh, that might be important to him as an individual. I can't think of the, with the exception of mothers, like once again, this offspring thing. Uh, I've never heard of a woman ever doing anything like that. Um, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. So the risk, you see, is, 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 is there, clear and present danger. Uh, what you, what we, what if you're still in the process, the unfortunately fallacious thinking, uh, process of thought where you think, hmm, Western women aren't doing it for me, so I'm going to head out east or I'm going to find someone else. You need to bear in mind that whatever you've learned from the Western woman needs to be extrapolated onto these other women out there because they carry the same seeds of corruption that all uh, women do, to use a somewhat hyperbolic term, seeds of corruption. Well, it's there. The seed of feminism, inherent feminism, inherent desire to promote female interests to the detriment of all else. It's all there. Whether the woman is Korean, Japanese, Chinese, Indonesian, Filipina, of course, I'm a, an opponent of traditionalism. I don't think it was that great, great a deal for men, to be quite honest. Um, so, no, there are there are a lot of traditionalists. So maybe if that's what you want, that would probably be the closest you could come to this, my opinion, a fictitious paradigm that many traditionalists have in their head. Um, God's forbid, if you do decide to actually marry a female, don't ever take her to a Western culture um, because the seeds will be released, uh, unleashed rather, um, and I've seen it firsthand. It's not a pretty sight. I would avoid doing that. It, it is a great fallacy. Um, female behavior is, for the most part, quite uniform and quite general. Uh, Quite easy to be uh, can be easily generalized. Don't you don't need uh, and it, it's not this distinction. And I once again I will refer, refer you back to Briefos Law, my video on that, not because I think 
my ability talking on the, about the topic is so amazing, or the video itself is amazing. Although I think Briefo's Law is amazing. It's amazingly accurate and precise. It's amazing to familiarize yourself with that. It's just really important. Because, personally, I don't want men uh, jeopardizing their, their health and sanity on the false notion that, hmm, American women or British women weren't cutting it for me, so I'm going to head out east. Usually it's, it's Asia, not always. And, uh, you know, get myself a Filipino or a Korean. That's not how it works. Uh, they have the same expectations, and you will always, always be just a utility. Just a utility to them. Expect no mercy, no compassion, none of those things. I'll end this video with uh, something Barbarossa said. It's probably one of my favorite things he's ever said. He said, you will find no solace in the bosom of a woman, I assure you. And I can assure you uh, of that as well. That will not happen. East, west, north, south, whatever the culture, it doesn't matter. That's all I have to say about this.